Churches Across the Nations. This is Liberty House International Church, all the way from the U.S., coming to you live by way of YouTube and uh, Facebook. In case you miss any part of this uh, broadcast, please go to our webpage, libertyhouseusa.org. Once again, libertyhouseusa.org. Or go to our YouTube channel. Please type in our full name, Liberty House International Church, and then you can treat yourself to the videos that we have there. I'm a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ, an agent of change and transformation. Um, my mission here is to push you forward to help you advance in your walk with the Lord. If I say something that doesn't resonate with you, please let's not fight. We belong to the same God, the same Father. My intent is not to cause any offense, so please don't take any offense. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil likes to talk with our brains or our minds. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, all right. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for standing alongside us and to have a... God is trying to tell us something. Yeah. All right? Uh, to have a brother Simon all the way from uh, Hamden or oh, 45, 30 minutes, right? One hour. Okay, 45, okay, one hour. All the way to come visit with us and to know that he's been watching us for a year. We have to give you an award. <laughs> Good to have you. Good to see you. Hallelujah. That's all we are talking about. We must be doing something good for him to drive um, that far to be here. Hallelujah. All right. So please study alongside us. You're going to be uh, enjoying it and you're going to be influencing lives. Okay. So uh, last uh, Friday, I started talking about two major influences. How many have listened so far? If you guys have not listened to it, you are in trouble. So I started talking about two major influences. And then we started by talking about environments. Because environments is where our character is shaped, is formed. That's where we go through development, environments. So I talked about what environment, those who have listened, can you give me one? Okay. You, you listen good. I said environment. Okay. Now you are giving you all that. That's the only one. So now she gave me three. <laughs> she said the church, the school, the home. So school is one environment. School campuses, wherever we attend schools, that is one of the areas that you know, a uh, uh, character is shaped or molded. The key players um, in that environment are what? The teachers, the professors, the instructors. So, depending on what they are giving you, um, if it's not in line with the Word of God, they are doing great injustice to you. Yeah. Right? And I remember um, <laughs> when our children were that young, like, uh, you know, like before third grade or whatever. When they come home, one of the favorite sayings, my teacher said, my teacher said, my teacher said, parents say, you remember that? Mm -hmm. Everything my teacher said, my teacher said. Yeah. They take that so serious. Yeah. You know, they forget that you are the parents. Mm -hmm. So you can say something and say, no, but my teacher said, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. So that's how they have influence uh, in the shaping yeah. or the molding of character. All right? So school is one. Then you come to what? Home. That is the first place of impact. The home is the first place. So you are born to parents, father and mother. And the father and the mother are supposed to be under Christ to start with. Are supposed to be what? People who have godly principles in their life. So in that place, they are going to show you what? A love. They are going to show you affection, acceptance, approval, affirmation. You know, so you are solidified in life. You have the uh, right kind of uh, foundation laid. Hallelujah. Amen. Unfortunately, it's not so. And so I'm talking about this because this is known as Palm Sunday. We are still in the year of our Lord 2023. Palm Sunday. So next Sunday is going to be what we call Resurrection, or some people call it Easter Sunday. All right. So I want us to be aware of this. God is about relationship. And it's just not about we sitting like a car sitting in the garage. He wants us to grow. He wants us to be developed. He wants us to mature. He wants us to what? Do things that will bring him glory. Things that will please him so his glory will be seen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. All right, so we are talking about this. And Jesus came for that. Jesus came for a relationship. Do you know that? He came for a relationship to reconcile us back to God. And in the church, it's so sad that even though we serve a God of relationship, yet in the church, the body of Christ, not many people know how to relate. We are still growing. That's why I say the things that I say. So far as they keep talking about prayer, 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 fasting, 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 prayer, fasting, prayer, fast, pray, fast, pray. They don't talk about relationship, talk about love. It's going to be difficult for our people to know how to love. Unless you are taught, you don't know it. So some parents, they didn't do any good for their children. Because they themselves, they walk in lust. They came together, they produced babies, procreated, they were not in love. I mean, no disrespect, but I'm just painting a good picture. And that is why some people, when a woman becomes a pregnant, then they say, what? Were you foolish? How come you didn't protect yourself? You know, for a guy to say that to a woman, it means that the guy himself is a, is a bigger fool. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. If you knew about protection, how come you didn't do anything about it? And if, uh, if he was not ready for a child, why did he go that route? Do you all agree with me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they ran away from these things. So many, uh, in some homes, I don't want to use a word, a word that is normally popularly used, people come from dysfunctional homes. Something is off, something is not proper, there's no order, there's no structure, there are no boundaries. No barriers. The discipline of God, the principles of God is absent. So people grow up and all that they have is their head filled with the physical, natural knowledge without God. Sense without the Holy Spirit. Human ability without God. And that can be dangerous. Hallelujah. Amen. So the home. And then we said the church. The church is what? Another place. And uh, we will say that, oh, so far as somebody is in the church, then they are going to grow. No, 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 no. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. You may be in a church, a place called church, a place with a cross on the building, a place where Jesus uh, is written on the building, and yet Jesus is not the center of what they do. It's not the focus. It's not the one preached. It's not the one talked about. Somebody is building their own kingdom or their own empire. So they come up with teachings they come up with principles, we call them man-made policies, commandments, to bind their followers or congregants so they can use them to accomplish their own selfish agenda or goals. So in that place, you think you are in the, in the church, but you are not in the church. You think you are being educated or equipped, but you are not being equipped. And that goes on. And that is why you see some believers, they, 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 they are shaken by the slightest of any storm in life. You see, Jesus said in this world we'll have tribulation troubles. But be a good cheer for our account. So studying the word of God prepares you. That's what the word of God says in the uh, second Timothy. Let's have the second Timothy chapter three, verses uh, seven, sixteen and seventeen. All scripture is inspired by God. The word of God. Is this is profitable for what doctrine, teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, training in righteousness. For what reason? That the man of God may be what complete, complete. Meaning that you be what prepared, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And we can tell that some people don't go about doing good works. They are not for that. Hallelujah. So unfortunately, that is going on. We want to help to bring balance, to bring a change to those who are in bondage. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Then another environment is association. Those that we roll with, those we call our friends, those we call uh, acquaintances or whatever, those people that you can tell that they are influencing your life. You know, the Bible says that do not be deceived. Uh, evil communication corrupts good minds. Let's put the amplified version, please. First, uh, Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 33. 1 Corinthians 
15:33. Amplified version. Let's read together. Are you here? Yes. I know it's past. It's uh, past noon, but you are not hungry yet. We are going to be shutting down very soon. So bear with me. Read. Do not be so deceived and what misled. So it means that one, even though you are born again, he's talking to the church at Collins. So you are born again, all right. You have the Holy Spirit within you. You are talking in tongues. You believe in Jesus, all right. If you don't stand your ground and keep tracking on the path of righteousness, you can what? Be deceived or be misled. All right? So let's take it from the beginning one more time. Shall we read? Do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionships, communion, associations, corrupt and deprave good manners and morals and character. Do you get it? So that's what happens. Environment. Please Google environment. We did that last uh, Friday. And I want us to do that again. Environment. Google that and please, uh, if you have the mic, you can say it. If you don't have the mic, you can say it. I'll pick it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I think environment is something that at times is like we take for granted. You know, but it's important to choose your environment. Be intentional about it. Don't just be anywhere. Right. Especially if, going to, if you are going to be there for a long time, right. be sure that is the right environment. Amen. I know a, a lady that I used to counsel many years ago. Um, she, she was in business. At the same time, she was also a counselor, older than me. And uh, one of the things, uh, she accepted a job in one of the big banks. And uh, what she told me is this. She said, well, even though it's a bank and certain things are allowed or whatever, they, they contradict my belief system, what the Bible teaches. I don't want to be part of it. And therefore, she quit the job. She left the bank, despite the pay and everything, she left and then went to another place to work. You see, she doesn't want to be in that environment. That's not okay. And we have to be what? Conscious of these things. We have to be very much aware of our environment. Hallelujah. If you are in an environment that is um, not helping you to realign to the will of God or to realign to the purpose of God, to realign to the word of God, to realign to the ways of God, to realign to the works of God, then you have to leave that place. Hallelujah. All right. Environment. The surroundings, or the surroundings or conditions, conditions in, which a person, in which a person, animal, animal or, plant lives, or plant lives or operates. Or operates. One more time. Environment is the surroundings, the surroundings or conditions, or conditions in, which person, in which a person, animal, animal or plant, or plant lives, or lives or operates. You see, so to start with, God gave us the right environment. If you take, let's say, uh, fish from water, that's the right environment for fish. If you take fish out of water, what what will happen to the uh, to the fish? Yeah, it's just a matter of time. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right environment is important. Yes. So God put every creation of us, the plants in the right environment, right. animals in the right environment. Yeah. We Mankind, human beings in the right environment. We have to understand that. If you go against this order of God, this system of God, you are dying what? Slowly. You are robbing yourself. You are cheating yourself. Because you will not survive. It's only a matter of what? Time. That's why you see people, look like they are flourishing. Oh, they have it. And you feel so bad about yourself. That, wow, I mean, I've been working on this for over 10 years now. This guy just showed up two years ago. Look at him. You don't know what is working. You don't know what is working. So leave that alone and mind your business. There are times because they choose crooked methods and ways, in no time you realize that, oh, now they come crashing what? Down. Hallelujah. Someone has to be aware of that. Amen. Amen. But the 
first major, I said two major influences. The first major one is the word of God. And Friday, I tackle this, so I'm not going to go about it. But we can look around us immediately. Even the one who is not born again can, can accept the fact that it is God's word that keeps the world going around. Keeps the world. Sun, the stars, the moon, where they ought to be, yeah. the planets. It is word that keeps the ocean, the waters, the lakes, the rivers, where they ought to be. You know, we all live uh, uh, on an island. Let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, we are surrounded by water. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if God wasn't keeping the waters? Mm -hmm. But his word. So the influence of his word is keeping everything is created. Yes. We can marry and then procreate. As it were. You know, create a human being. It's his word of blessing. That what? He has conferred upon us. Yeah. His word keeps everything. Yeah. Yeah. That is why I don't have to neglect his word. And when Jesus showed up, he, he emphasized that. He said, you have made the word of God not deferred by your word. Commandments, man-made policies and all that. But stick to my word. Follow me. Remain in my word. Abide in my word. John 8 and 1. Abide in my word. Remain in my word. Continue in my word. Hallelujah. Follow me, my word. Hallelujah. Amen. That is what makes everything the way it ought to be. It, it is the difference between failure and succeeding. The word. Like I talk from the home, people have seen each other and they think, oh, they love them. They love each other. And they go into what they call marriage. And then two years, they are no longer. Or they can go, go, go. Five years beyond that, there are no more. What happens? Somewhere along the line, the word of God is kicked aside. Mm -hmm. And then we begin to do our own thing, and then we realize that mm -mm, nothing can be sustained without his word. Mm -hmm. It's by his word that he holds everything. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And when we read Colossians, you see that. You know, so it's we know his word and doing it. Like I always say, look, if you know his word and you do it, it works all the time. It works all the time. His word works. It doesn't matter what you face. If you are working his word, you will come out of it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So then I said the second one is the Holy Spirit. So go listen to uh, Fridays. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is going to be part two. Even though my time is up, let me see if I can do this. The second part is uh, the second major influence is the Holy Spirit. Like I said, this is the spirit by which God created the heavens and the earth. It's that same spirit that he, 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 he went with to create us. When the world was chaotic, it's that same spirit that moved upon you know, the surface of the earth and everything became all right. That spirit is what made Jesus go about to heal the sick. It's that spirit that empowered Jesus to raise Lazarus from the dead. It's that spirit that what empowered Jesus to die on the cross to save you and I, to lay down his life. It's that spirit. Amen. Is that spirit? We have to have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. And no wonder when Jesus showed up in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. We can't do anything without the Spirit of God. You have to know His Word by the Spirit. Why? Because God the Father, God the, uh, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Okay. So Jesus is equally God, the Holy Spirit is equally God. They are equally what? Eternal. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want you to understand, Jesus the word was here, physically. Alright? As a human being that you can touch. He's no longer here. But who is here? The Holy Spirit. You can't touch him because he doesn't have a body like Jesus. But still, God is on this earth. And God, most importantly, endures us. As a church of believers, his children. Anytime I say this, it hits me. 
We take it light. We take it for granted. But God indwells you. God indwells you by His Spirit. You see how you are looking at me now? It's just like it's just like the tea that you drink, the coffee that you drink. It's, it's like, oh, I drink coffee every day. God. Wow. Jesus couldn't have come out of the grave if it wasn't for the Spirit of God. The Bible says it, the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, since He dwells in us, since it's around the us, the supporters has quickened our mortal bodies. Hallelujah. They put a two, uh, what? A stone, heavy one. It took so many people to roll that stone. But the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God, Hallelujah. rolled the stone. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God. Hallelujah. You have that same Spirit Amen. with you. Amen. That's why it doesn't bother me. We have to pray. We have to give. We have to do all those things. We have to praise God in the dance, in the songs, and all that. But if we are not equipped with the Word of God to know our number one partner, the Holy Spirit, to know Him as a person, to know Him as the one, our strengthener, the one who empowers us to live a victorious life, we are going to shortchange ourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. So he said, The Spirit of the Lord and God is upon me because he has what? Anointed me. When it's on you, the anointing comes upon you. To do what? Read. Continue. To do what? To preach, preach the gospel to the, to the poor. Lord. He has sent me to what? Heal the broken heart. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And recovery of sight to the blind. To set a liberty to those who are oppressed and then to proclaim 19, the acceptable year of the Lord. 19, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's Jesus' mission, his assignment, the whole thing, his death to rescue us from the penalty of our sin because the wages of sin is death. But he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He couldn't do it without the Spirit of God. He couldn't do it without the Holy Spirit. And he died so we can also have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And the disciples couldn't also work. The apostles, those that he chose, they couldn't do it without the Holy Spirit. So he said, stay. When he was raised, he said, stay in Jerusalem to what? You receive the promise. And so in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that it happened Amen. on the day of Pentecost. But in Acts chapter 1, 8, it says what? And you shall receive what? Power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Amen. And look at the disciples, bunch of cowards before training, before Jesus equipping them. The training did them good. And then the Holy Spirit coming upon them or dwelling them. They started to do what Jesus was doing. That's right. Amen. The difference between us and the apostles is the fact that they took what they heard seriously. And in the church, we are not taking it seriously. Because we are confused by some saying that the last apostle died, they took the power of God into his grave. So the power of God is not alive or real anymore. That is not so. So it's difficult. Our minds are conditioned. And I've heard all kinds of things. When even people come, you know, to believe God for healing, they are studying, they are not believing. Because to them, it's, uh, does that happen? You know, because something that has been said way back in the wrong environment has blocked them from receiving their healing. It's a tough thing, I'm telling you. When that thing takes place, that barrier has to be removed before you can receive anything. Okay. There are people too that think, okay, they are just in this world to suffer. When you tell them God didn't create anyone to suffer, but He wants us to be blessed, Amen. to be fruitful, productive, yeah. and be blessing to people. Yeah. They don't accept it because growing up, they've been taught that you know, some people can should be rich, some people should be poor, not yeah. everybody is going to be, you know, but God wants us, He says, he says God is able to make all grace abound to us. That always having your sufficiency in all things, you what? I'm bound to excel in good works. 
That's the name of the of the night. Hallelujah. That's God. I mean, if you are broke and you are short, how do you even take care of your own children? And why do we accept some things? Wrong environment. Teachings that come from wrong environment. We can't think about something great. We always think about things that are small. But that is wrong. Hallelujah. Then when you come out, uh, even to believers in general, apart from those who follow Jesus, immediately the apostles, let's read uh, uh, what do you call it? Ephesians chapter 5. He's given us what? His spirit. So we can do. Because he said, if you believe in me, the works that I do, shall you do also. And greater works. John yes. 14, 12. Amen. Ephesians. Let's have it. Ephesians 5, 18. Close on that one. Do not be drunk with wine. Rather, continue with me. Rather, okay. Do not be drunk. Let's read it. Come on now, you guys. Why are you doing that to me? Amen. Read. Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled because there's the influence of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We have to come under the influence. Amen. There's some kind of influence that is sold in stores. It's in the Bible. <laughs> it's called spirit. That one is not a good spirit. Or some call it a liquor, alcohol. And when people get under that influence, you see how they behave. At times they drive their, 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 their own selves into a ditch. Mm -hmm. They kill innocent ones. They misbehave. That influence is not good. That's a wrong spirit. Amen. But I'm talking about the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It says be filled with that. And when you are filled with that, what happens? Next verse. Hallelujah. Amen. Speaking to one another in what? Psalms. That's what you'll be doing. Yeah. And hymns and spiritual songs and singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And 20 says, give me thanks always for all things to God. The Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's the same like the Word. When you are filled with the Word, you come under the influence of the Word. Mm -hmm. This same thing, the thing that we read out in uh, Colossians mm -hmm. chapter 3, the same thing happens. Mm -hmm. When you are under the influence of the Word, or under the influence of the Holy Spirit, one thing that everybody will see about your life is love. Yeah. Love for people. Genuine love. No hanging around somebody and then uh, strings attached. What is this for me? Genuine love. You see compassion. And I'll talk about that a bit on Friday. We have to have the influence of the Holy Spirit. I see how people are tired. They're exhausted. I've had it. I can't do it anymore. You know why? Because they're not under the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't make you tired. He fires you up. Amen. Amen. He Amen. strengthens you Amen. to continue Amen. to press in. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit doesn't make you give up or throw in the towel. That's right. He doesn't. Amen. He's your stand back. Hallelujah. Present help. Yes. Strengthen. Yes. Daily you have the strength. Hallelujah. Just as you have oxygen, the wind, the air to breathe every day. The same way the Holy Spirit consistently, constantly, Amen. He's giving you what? Strength. For life. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So you need him. Go read about the Holy Spirit. And as you read your Bible, we are going to come into uh, what do you call it? More knowledge about the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's relatable. Hallelujah. He's a person, divine person. Yes, He's your help Hallelujah. and helper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you listen to him and you fellowship him well, I'm telling you. In every situation, anything you face, any circumstance, he knows the way out. Amen. He will give you insight. He will let you know actually what you are looking at. Yes. He will take out the confusion from your life. Yes. He will take out the hopelessness yes. and give you assurance. Yes. He will take away Hallelujah. the helplessness yes. and let you know that yes. God yes. is an abundantly present help. The Holy Spirit. Yes. The Holy Spirit won't cause you to be shaken. 
when everybody is shaking, like David, you'll be standing yes. and you say, I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to cut off his head. Amen. That's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You can't be that bold. You can't say these things. Like Peter was told, don't preach again. He said, no, we cannot. For what we have seen, what we have heard, what we have handled, yes. that is what we are going to talk about. You are not going to stop us. Hallelujah. And at that time, they were beating. They rejoiced that they suffered you for the Lord. They were asked, don't do that again. They said, you judge for yourself whether it's right to listen to you or to listen to God. When the influence of the Holy Spirit is upon you, you become courageous. You become bold. And if you see Christians that are not that bold, that is what is wrong. They always want to take the back seat. They won't stand up for anything. They are in for everything. Stand up for something. Stand up for righteousness. Uphold the standards of God. Stand with truth. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. God has given you a voice. Speak up. You are his instrument. You are his channel. If the Bible says, have no one. Let me close with that. And that. Ephesians 5.11. It says, have no one fellowship with our fruitful works of what? Let's put it there. Read together. Read. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Expose them? Christians, expose them. So why is that when I start and I teach truth to expose wrong teaching, then some have a problem? Do you see? We have to expose them. Well, if you don't expose them, people are going to be put in bondage. And anytime you teach truth, it's going to expose what is wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what we should be doing. Amen. So I'm obeying scripture. Right. So those who don't know it, they'll say, ah, why are you talking about that? You are judging, you are judging. Yes, you are supposed to judge people's conduct and actions. Yes. I'm not God and saying that, oh, you, you are man for hell. You, you are man for heaven. That's not what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But if somebody says, we judge all the time. You judge. When you sit in your car driving, you judge. Whether you should, you should go forward or you should apply your brakes. That's judgment. We charge all the time. So why do we behave like that? We are supposed to charge. But you see, wrong environments have conditioned some of us to think that it's wrong to charge. So far as you are judging by their fruits, you know that Jesus said. So, for, so far as you are judging somebody's conduct, somebody's action, their word, what they are saying is proper. If you don't judge, how are you going to follow what is right? You have to judge, discriminate. You have to scrutinize. In the light of truth to say that this is right, I'm going to say yes to it. This is wrong, I'm going to say what? No to it. But if you don't know your word, somebody who doesn't know anything say, why are you judging? Then you start, we have to defend truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'll end on this note Hallelujah. because my time is gone. Amen. So I charge you with the words in Galatians chapter 5. Verses 1 and 13, stand firm in the liberty well with Jesus, the anointed, has made you free. And do not again be entangled with the yoke of bondage, but by love, serve one another. Amen. So this is what? Part 2 of uh, two major influences. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks for tuning in. Love you dearly. Hallelujah. Amen.